All right, guys, I'll just take one minute of your precious time. Just wanted to let all of you know that if you want to practice all these questions using artificial intelligence and practice on a portal which is as similar as your actual PT exam, which will give you exact scores which you are likely to get in your exam, just register on languageacademy.com.au. You can practice as many questions. On top of that, you can get instant feedback, instant scores, and instant suggestions on what other things you need to work on and how to improve your mistakes and turn them into your strength. You can also take a full scored mock test. You'll get a full scorecard. You'll get in-depth analysis. You'll get tutors' feedback. One mock test is available for free, and four sectional mock tests are available for free. You just need to go on languageacademy.com.au, register over there. Use Google Chrome, log in and practice, and make sure you get your desired score at the earliest. Now you can continue with the video, or you can just log on to languageacademy.com.au and practice all these questions over there as well. All the very best. I'll see you very soon. Adidas teamed up with an organization called Parley for the Oceans. Parley goes out and collects plastic waste from the ocean. Adidas uses the plastic waste to make shoes. Shoes made with plastic from the ocean. Good for the environment and good for business. Because if you know that rapidly growing consumer segment known as hipsters and I know you know hipsters then you know that a hipster faced with the choice between a no-name shoe and an Adidas made with plastic from the ocean will pick the Adidas every day of the week and twice on Sunday. And then walk around like it's no big deal but look for every opportunity to talk about them. The most characteristic feature of spiders is their ability to produce silken threads. Spiders normally have six finger-like silk glands, called spinnerets, located beneath their abdomen. To spin a web, the spider squeezes the silk out of its body through two small holes. The liquid silk is thicker than water and dries into a fine thread as soon as it comes in contact with air. Spider silk is much stronger than steel and resists breakage because of its elasticity. It can stretch up to 140% of its original length. The diameter of these silken threads is about 10,000 of an inch. Spiders use this silk to make webs to trap their prey.
The egg sacs of some spiders are also made of silk which pre-treats the unborn progeny. The majority of children around the world have at least one sibling. The sibling relationship is likely to last longer than any other relationship in one's lifetime and plays an integral part in the lives of families. Yet, in comparison to the wealth of studies on parent-child relationships, relatively little attention has been devoted to the role of siblings and their impact on one another's development. In recent decades, research has focused on sibling relations in early childhood, and the shift from examining the role of structural variables, e.g., age, birth order, towards more process variables, e.g., understanding of their social worlds, has proved to be a fruitful direction. In high-income countries, most of those killed or injured in road traffic crashes are drivers and passengers of four-wheeled vehicles. In low-income and middle-income countries, however, vulnerable road users, pedestrians, cyclists and motorcyclists and users of public transportation constitute a higher proportion of road users and consequently make up a larger proportion of those injured or killed on the roads. This report focuses on young road users, defined as those under 25 years of age. The document highlights the main risk factors for road traffic injuries, noting how many of these risks are elevated in youth.
A pond's ecosystem consists of abiotic environmental factors and biotic communities of organisms. Abiotic environmental factors of a pond's ecosystem include temperature, flow, and salinity. The percentage of dissolved oxygen levels in a water body determines what kind of organisms will grow there. After all, fish need dissolved oxygen in order to survive. However, anaerobic bacteria will not thrive in an ecosystem pumped with dissolved oxygen. A water body's salinity may also determine the different species present. For instance, marine organisms tolerate salinity, while freshwater organisms will not thrive when exposed to salt. In fact, freshwater ecosystems often have plant species present which will absorb salts that are dangerous for freshwater organisms. No wonder that besides the scriptures, in many cultures, nature is also worshipped. The message that is transmitted is that of maintaining environment and ecological balance. People are taught to live in harmony with nature and, recognize that divinity is there everywhere. Nature is a great teacher. A river never stops flowing. If it finds an obstruction in the form of a heavy rock, the river water fights to remove it from its path or finds an alternative path to move ahead. This teaches us not only to be nurturing but also to be progressive in life, keeping the fighting spirit alive. We learn a lot in nature's lap but are unwilling to comprehend it. Rather than being considerate to our surrounding and environment, we are being senselessly insensitive. Health insecurity is at an all-time high. In a time when thousands of people lose their health insurance every day. When health care is becoming elusive to even well-to-do Americans. And when any person is just one pink slip away from becoming uninsured. It becomes clear that health care for all is not just important to achieve, but imperative. At its root. The lack of health care for all in America is fundamentally a moral issue. The United States is the only industrialized nation that does not have some form of universal health care, defined as a basic guarantee of health care to all of its citizens.
Another health-related benefit of gardening is that when people tend to their gardens, they are getting exercise. Even an activity as simple as gardening can contribute towards weight loss. Gardening gets a person outdoors, exposed to natural air, and refocused on a pleasant activity. Gardening also offers nutritional benefits to those who choose to plant a vegetable garden. Creating a vegetable garden is a way of ensuring that there is a continuous supply of fresh vegetables to consume. Vegetable gardeners know exactly where their produce is coming from and they also know exactly what chemicals were used to grow the produce. It presented evidence that the diversity of life arose by common descent through a branching pattern of evolution. Before developing his theories and writing this book, Darwin spent five years on HMS Beagle. The Beagle sailed across the Atlantic Ocean, and then carried out detailed hydrographical surveys around the coast of the southern part of South America returning via Tahiti and Australia after having circumnavigated the Earth. Darwin spent most of the time on land investigating geology and making natural history collections, while the Beagle surveyed and charted coasts. Puzzled by the geographical distribution of wildlife and fossil, he collected on the voyage. At least five people were killed and several others wounded when Sudanese security forces opened fire on demonstrators in Khartoum and elsewhere in the country Saturday. The Sudan Doctors' Committee said four people died from gunshots and one suffocated from tear gas in Khartoum and Omdurman on Saturday. 
Several other protesters were wounded, including from gunshots. The rallies came two days after military coup leader General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan reappointed himself the head of the Sovereign Council, Sudan's interim governing body. Thursday's move angered the pro-democracy alliance and frustrated the United States and other countries that have urged the military to reverse its coup and to restore civilian rule. Chocolate diamonds that are actually brown diamonds are compared to the well-known white diamond, which aren't of much worth. Diamonds are produced in mines. The best-known diamond mines are in Australia, South Africa and Russia. The largest diamond mine was discovered in 1976 in the desert of Australia near a little creek named Lake Argyle. Diamonds are created under very extreme conditions of pressure and high temperature. It is a general misunderstanding that there exist only white colorless diamonds. Actually, diamonds exist in many different colors. Of all the diamond mines in the world, almost 80% of the diamonds produced are brownish in color. A massive tow truck worked Saturday to remove the remains of a burned-out oil tanker that exploded in a giant fireball overnight near the capital of Sierra Leone. Reuters' David Doyle has more. Deputy Health Minister Amara Jambai said the death toll currently stands at 99 with more than 100 people being treated in hospitals and clinics across the capital, Freetown. In a video from the scene shared online, the head of the National Disaster Management Agency, Brima Bura Sisse, said, We've got so many casualties, burned corpses, adding, It's a terrible, terrible accident. Freetown's mayor said the extent of the damage from Friday's explosion was not yet known, adding that police and her deputy were at the scene to assist disaster management officials.
Forests are an important part of civilization. They not only form a considerable portion of the national wealth of a country, but also play an important role in maintaining the environmental balance. Indiscriminate felling of trees to enhance city areas is a threat to our civilization. We often forget that a peaceful, sensitive and well-balanced coexistence of man-made civilization and natural flora and fauna is absolutely important for human existence on the earth. We forget that deforestation for the urbanization project led to the destruction of past civilizations such as Mohenjo-Daro. Indiscriminate felling of trees not only leaves our planet with fewer trees but also threatens the wildlife of the region. No matter how busy one's schedule is, it is very important to schedule time for self-care, specifically for expressing creativity. Trying out different hobbies is a great way to explore one's creativity because it can be very enjoyable. Some people find one hobby and fall in love with it so much it becomes their passion. For example, I love to play with natural ingredients and blend essential oils. Making all natural, organic skincare products and teaching the recipes in my community workshops is one of my passions. Some people prefer to try different hobbies for shorter periods of time, or change them up each season to stay interested and keep trying different things. One great thing about hobbies is that there are no set rules. Hello. My name is David. It's nice to meet you. Hi. I'm Jenny. It's my pleasure to meet you. I am sorry. What was your name again? Jenny. So Jenny, what do you do for a living? I work at the local school teaching English. What do you for a living? I am also an English teacher, but I'm currently out of work. Sorry to hear that. It has been really nice talking to you. Yes. It was a great pleasure meeting you.
World Wetland Day was celebrated for the first time in 1997. The day is observed to raise public awareness of wetland values and benefits in general and the Ramsar Convention in particular. Since 1997, the Ramsar Secretariat provides outreach materials to help raise public awareness about the importance and value of wetlands. For World Wetlands Day in 2016, the theme is, Wetlands for Our Future, Sustainable Livelihoods. As per the Ramsar Convention, this theme is selected to demonstrate the vital role of wetlands for the future of humanity and specifically their relevance towards achieving the new sustainable development goals. More than a billion people make a living from wetlands. How many rolls, cookies or baby carrots would you have to eat to feel full? It's probably more than you'd want to admit. It may not even be possible with carrots. But what if you ate that volume of filet mignon? Hunger and fullness are controlled by hormones that send messages between your gut and your head. And different foods send different messages. Some say eat more and others warn you to slow down. Now a study finds that protein is, indeed, key in generating signals of fullness. The work is in the journal cell. Mice that lack receptors to sense that they were eating protein kept chowing down without appearing to feel full. The Romans celebrated New Year on the 1st of March so the name September is derived from Latin words meaning seventh month. October was the eighth month, November was the ninth month and December was the tenth month. In England, New Year was not in January until 1752. January is named after the Roman god Janus, who was the god of gates, doors, and beginnings. February may be named after the Roman festival of Februa. March is named after Mars the god of war. June is named after the goddess Juno and July is named after Julius Caesar. August is named after Augustus Caesar. The origin of the names of the other months is not certain. April is believed to be derived from the Latin word aperier, 
which means to open because buds opened at that time. For the first 30 years of his life, Beethoven could listen to and play music effortlessly. As a result, he understood sounds of musical instruments and the pitch of the singing voices. He knew the harmony between music and singing before he became completely deaf. His deafness was not sudden, but a gradual decline. This slow process of losing his hearing activated his mind to imagine how his compositions would sound like. When he became completely deaf, he started to observe the vibrations of the piano. The observations helped him realize that he could not hear the high notes of the piano. To be able to hear his own compositions, he sawed off the legs of his piano. Vegging often suffers choking air, but there's now one more thing proven to dissipate it, an Olympics. The 2008 Summer Games impelled those in charge of the Chinese capital to clear the air. Not only did they banish smog and smoke, they also inadvertently cut greenhouse gas emissions by as much as 96,000 metric tons during the Games. That's according to a new analysis published in Geophysical Research Letters on July 20. The key was banning half of all the private cars in the city from driving on any particular day during the event. The finding suggests that individual choices like whether to drive or take public transit to work have major cumulative effects.
This is a great lesson for all of us to learn, that in all matters the two extremes are alike. The extreme positive and the extreme negative are always similar. When the vibrations of light are too slow we do not see them, nor do we see them when they are too rapid. So is with sound. When very low in pitch we do not hear it, when very high we do not hear it either. Of like nature is the difference between resistance and non-resistance. One man does not resist because he is weak, lazy and cannot, because he will not. The other man knows that he can strike an irresistible blow if he likes. Yet he not only does not strike, but blesses his enemies. The Gold Coast Turf Club has laid audacious plans for a multi-million dollar hotel complex that could vault the club into the top echelon of thoroughbred clubs across the world. While the plan is still in its infancy, it would see the club potentially join forces with other landowners in the precinct to develop the hotel, a facility similar to Hong Kong's Happy Valley Racetrack. The high-end hotel which would be aimed at punters, Magic Millions attendees, Gold Coast show patrons and visitors to the various events booked to run at the exhibition hall already constructed at the club, would include car parking facilities, restaurants, bars and gambling facilities. Tax dodging by multinationals means Australia misses out on $6 billion in annual revenue that could have otherwise been spent on essential public services such as hospitals and schools, according to a report from Oxfam. The report, The Hidden Billions How Tax Havens Impact Lives at Home and Abroad, 
says multinationals companies operating in Australia use low tax or no tax nations to avoid paying tax locally. It says Australian-based multinationals use tax havens that cost Australia $6 billion in lost tax revenue annually, and developing countries an estimated US$2.3 billion United States dollars, $2.8 billion, every year. The Elephanta Caves are located in western India on Elephanta Island, otherwise known as the island of Garapuri, which features two hillocks separated by a narrow valley. The small island is dotted with numerous ancient archaeological remains that are the sole testimonies to its rich cultural past. These archaeological remains reveal evidence of occupation from as early as the 2nd century BC. The rock-cut Elephanta Caves were constructed about the mid-5th to 6th centuries AD. The most important among the caves is the Great Cave 1, which measures 39 meters from the front entrance to the back. In plan, this cave in the western hill closely resembles Dumar Lina Cave at Ellora, in India. The main body of the cave, excluding the porticos on the three open sides in the back aisle, is 27 meters square and is supported by rows of six columns each. According to an aggressive military strategy known as the Schlieffen Plan, named for its mastermind, German Field Marshal Alfred von Schlieffen, Germany began fighting World War I on two fronts, invading France through neutral Belgium in the west and confronting mighty Russia in the east. On August 4, 1914, German troops under Erich Ludendorff crossed the border into Belgium, in violation of that country's neutrality. In the First Battle of World War I, the Germans assaulted the heavily fortified city of Liege, using the most powerful weapons in their arsenal enormous siege cannons to capture the city by August 15.
On the Eastern Front of World War I, Russian forces invaded East Prussia and German Poland, but were stopped short by German and Austrian forces at the Battle of Tannenberg in late August 1914. Despite that victory, the Red Army assault had forced Germany to move two corps from the Western Front to the Eastern, contributing to the German loss in the Battle of the Marne. Combined with the fierce Allied resistance in France, the ability of Russia's huge war machine to mobilize relatively quickly in the East ensured a longer, more grueling conflict instead of the quick victory Germany had hoped to win with the Schlieffen Plan. Over the next two years, the Russian army mounted several offensives on the Eastern Front but were unable to break through German lines. Defeat on the battlefield fed the growing discontent among the bulk of Russia's population, especially the poverty-stricken workers and peasants, and its hostility towards the imperial regime. This discontent culminated in the Russian Revolution of 1917, spearheaded by Vladimir Lenin and the Bolsheviks. One of Lenin's first actions as leader was to call a halt to Russian participation in World War I. Russia reached an armistice with the Central Powers in early December 1917, freeing German troops to face the other allies on the Western Front. Money, one of the earliest and most significant inventions of civilization, is essential to the development of trade without it there is only barter, a relationship between two people each of whom has something which the other wants. Money, which everybody wants, provides an intermediary substance, enabling the seller to choose when and where he wishes to become a buyer. All primitive societies invest certain things with a special value particularly livestock, and items of rarity or beauty. They are presented on ceremonial occasions such as weddings. The possession of large numbers of cattle or pigs is clear evidence of wealth and prestige. But these objects are not money in our sense, capable of easy use in everyday treasured. 
The most often quoted example of primitive money is shells in Africa cowries and wampum in America. A police veteran's gut-wrenching plea for compassion and understanding has touched thousands in the aftermath of a week of violence in the U.S. Mary McGregor, a former police officer, took to Facebook to share her story. It included such harrowing details of what she's experienced that it will no doubt change how many view those working in the police force. She spoke about peeling a dead, burned baby from the front of her uniform shirt and how she cried on the chest of a dead co-worker who was unrecognizable from all the bullet holes. The events of last week's tragic Dallas shootings, where a lone gunman killed five police officers and injured seven others during a street protest, led to an outpouring of pleas for unity by fellow officers on social media. Gold was discovered in New South Wales and central Victoria in 1851, luring thousands of young men and some adventurous young women from the colonies. They were joined by boatloads of prospectors from China and a chaotic carnival of entertainers, publicans, illicit liquor sellers, prostitutes and quacks from across the world. In Victoria, the British governor's attempts to impose order a monthly license and heavy-handed troopers led to the bloody anti-authoritarian struggle of the Eureka Stockade in 1854. Despite the violence on the goldfields, the wealth from gold and wool brought immense investment to Melbourne and Sydney and by the 1880s they were stylish modern cities.
Through spiritual research and guidance from various saints, we have found that World War III is imminent and its impact would be ubiquitous. With the way some terrible events are unfolding on a regular basis, people are expecting a world war. World War III feed as a key phrase that people search for, has now begun to trend on Google and shows no sign of reducing. This indicates that people around the world have begun to view the possibility of World War III as something that is likely to happen. Yet surprisingly not many search for terms related to surviving World War III or a nuclear fallout. Up to now for those of us in the developed world, the crisis is offshore in some distant Middle Eastern land or the continent of Africa. The Gallipoli Campaign of 1915-16, also known as the Battle of Gallipoli or the Dardanelles Campaign, was an unsuccessful attempt by the Allied powers to control the sea route from Europe to Russia during World War I. The campaign began with a failed navy attack by British and French ships on the Dardanelles Straits in February to March 1915 and continued with a major land invasion of the Gallipoli Peninsula on April 25, involving British and French troops as well as divisions of the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, ANZAC. Lack of sufficient intelligence and knowledge of the terrain along with a fierce Turkish resistance, hampered the success of the invasion. By mid-October, Allied forces had suffered heavy causalities and had made little headway from their initial landing sites. Fast forward from 2007 to 2016 and as we know we are living in a world where we are faced with cataclysm events time and again. The situation worldwide in 2016 looks grim with increased natural disasters, climate change with the hottest years on record, an ongoing civil war in Syria, widespread havoc, bombings created by terrorist organizations, a migrant crisis, the acquisition, 
and deployment of nuclear weapons by world superpowers and other governments seeking international recognition. Predictions by Nostradamus a renowned seer from France also indicate that World War III will take place. Various sources have interpreted Nostradamus' predictions and have inferred that World War III will be so terrible that first two world wars will seem like child's play. Although, we often talk of the outdoor air pollution caused by industrial and vehicular exhausts, the indoor pollution may prove to be as or a more important cause of health problems. Recognition of air pollution is relatively recent. It is not uncommon to experience a feeling of suffocation in a closed environment. It is often ascribed to the lack of oxygen. Fortunately, However, the composition of air is remarkably constant all over the world. There is about 79% nitrogen and 21% oxygen in the air the other gases forming a very small fraction. It is true that carbon dioxide exhaled out of lungs may accumulate in a closed and overcrowded place. But such increment is usually small and temporary unless the room is really airtight. Exposure to poisonous gases such as carbon monoxide may occur in a closed room, heated by burning coal inside. This may also prove to be fatal. Too many parents these days can't say no. As a result, they find themselves raising children who respond greedily to the advertisements aimed right at them. Even getting what they want doesn't satisfy some kids. They only want more. Now, a growing number of psychologists, educators and parents think it's time to stop the madness and start teaching kids about what's really important. Values like hard work, contentment, honesty and compassion. The struggle to set limits has never been tougher and the stakes have never been higher. One recent study of adults who were overindulged as children paints a discouraging picture of their future. When given too much too soon, they grow up to be adults who have difficulty coping with life's disappointments.
Exercise is like fertilizer for your brain. All those hours spent on exercising your muscles, create rich capillary beds not only in leg and hip muscles, but also in your brain. More blood vessels in your brain and muscles mean more oxygen and nutrients to help them work. When you pedal, you also force more nerve cells to fire. The result. You double or triple the production of these cells, literally building your brain. You also release neurotransmitters, the messengers between your brain cells. So all those cells, new and old, can communicate with each other for better, faster functioning. That's a pretty profound benefit to cyclists. This kind of growth is especially important with each passing birthday, because as we age, our brains shrink and those connections weaken. Exercise restores and protects the brain cells. Panther cubs are generally in evidence in March. They are bomb blind. This is a provision of nature against their drifting away from the place of safety in which they are lodged by their mother, and exposing themselves to the danger of their being devoured by hyenas, jackals, and other predators. They generally open their eyes in about three to four weeks. The mother alone rears its cubs in seclusion. It keeps them out of the reach of the impulsive and impatient male. As a matter of fact the mother separates from the male soon after mating and forgets all about their tumultuous union. The story that the male often looks in to find out how the mother is progressing with her cubs has no foundation except in what we wish it should do at least. The mother carries its cubs about by holding them by the scruff of their necks, in its mouth. Pilgrims traditionally moved ahead, creating a feeling of belonging towards all, conveying a message of brotherhood among all they came across whether in small caves, ashrams or local settlements. They received the blessings and congregations of yogis and mahatmas in return while conducting the dharma of their pilgrimage. A pilgrimage is like penance of sadhana to stay near nature and to experience a feeling of oneness with it, to keep the body healthy and fulfilled with the amount of food, while seeking freedom from attachments and yet remaining happy while staying away from relatives and associates. This is how a pilgrimage should be rather than making it like a picnic by taking a large group along and living in comfort, packing in entertainment, and tampering with the environment.
Many of us believe that small means insignificant. We believe that small actions and choices do not have much impact on our lives. We think that it is only the big things, the big actions and the big decisions that really count. But when you look at the lives of all great people, you will see that they built their character through small decisions, small choices and small actions that they performed every day. They transformed their lives through step-by-step -step or day-by-day -day approach. They nurtured and nourished their good habits and chipped away their bad habits, one by one. It was their small day-to-day -day decisions that added up to make tremendous difference in the long run. Indeed, in matters of personal growth and character building, there is no such thing as an overnight success. Doctors know a lot about prescribing medications. Take two brisk walks and call me in the morning. But for many patients, a light get moving plan might be just what the doctor should have ordered. Many of us aren't exactly in peak physical condition. But a large number of people are actually deconditioned. So says the Mayo Clinic's Michael Joyner in an essay in the Journal of Physiology. After surgery, illness, pregnancy or extended inactivity for any reason, people might feel faint or fatigued when they try even mild exercise. These signs, Joyner argues, should be recognized by doctors not as symptoms that should be treated with drugs, but rather as a medical state of deconditioning that might be better helped with a gentle, guided exercise program. Now crack your PTE sitting at your home. Language Academy brings to you the smartest AI-powered practice portal, with instant scores and feedback for all the tasks. Along with the practice questions, access free sectional and full mock tests, and get instant scorecard with in-depth feedback and analysis. For more hidden secrets, tips, strategies, and proven templates, click the link below and subscribe to our video course today.